Hey guys, so today I'm gonna be looking at more revenge stories. Yeah, let's just get right into the video. I, Ryan, and my twin brother Sebastian have never ever been close. In fact, he made life hell growing up and my parents didn't help by playing favorites, getting him better stuff in our birthday, only going to see films he liked at the cinema, and giving him extra money for housework despite us doing the same amount of work. He would always put me down, belittle me, bully me with his friends at school, break my stuff and he then blames me and was just a pain in general. Growing up, the only people I knew to rely on was my older sister Jane, my cousin Kai, and best friend Isaac, who all knew what an awful person my brother was. Anyway, cut to when I was 17 and I had my first girlfriend, someone I loved very much. We didn't have sex because she wanted to wait till the 18th birthday to lose her virginity, but it turns out that she was having an affair with my brother behind my back for half the time we were together and only got caught when it was revealed she was pregnant. I was crushed. She knew how much I hated my brother and she saw some of the awful things he did to me, but she still went and did that. Cheating is bad enough, but to do it with him of all people. I punched him in the face and broke his nose and made him lose a tooth, but according to my parents, I'm the one in the wrong and now we have to help this girl who is carrying my brother's child and have to help support them. My brother then said he had no intention of being a father and told my girlfriend to get an abortion. She then ran out of town and I never saw her again. Don't know if she had the baby or aborted. All I know was that she was gone and my folks were still praising my brother as the golden child. I was still the black sheep and failure as usual. Another year goes past and me and my brother still despise each other, but I had started dating again. Was a long while, but I found someone. Found a boy I liked. I am bisexual and this new guy, Daniel, I had met in college caught my eye. He was deaf and I studied sign language out of boredom, so we got to talking and things just seemed to click. We date, fall in love and bring him to my friend Isaac's party to introduce him to friends and all feels great. At this point, the only one who knew I was bi was Isaac. But one day walking into a cinema holding my boyfriend's hand, I bump into my evil twin. He points, laughs and says some homophobic remarks. I tell him to go screw off and I go see a movie with my arm around my boyfriend. When I got home after dropping my boyfriend home, I knew I'd be facing something as I walked through the front door. I saw both my parents on the sofa, my mother crying about how on earth could she have given birth to someone so disgusting? <gasps> was it too much to hope she saw the light and was talking about my brother? But nope, she was talking about me and how I'm a stain on our family's name. My father gets up to yell at me. At this point, I see my brother up the staircase with a grin on his face. He then comes down and says he's uncomfortable with sharing a room with me and my folks kick me out there and then. With what little clothes and money I had, I went to Isaac's house and his family took me in where I stayed for six months actually experiencing familial love and affection and Isaac's mother and stepdad I consider my own parents now. Eventually me, Daniel and Isaac all get a two bedroom flat together and all is good for the time being. Oh my gosh, his family is actual trash. <sighs> Honestly, his family does not deserve him. Seriously, he's too good for them. How do you not freaking teach your son some manners? You know, the evil twin who got his brother's girlfriend pregnant and then he was like, I don't want the baby, I bought it. And the parents are still gonna love him and telling him that he was right. <sighs> That's how you ruin your child. That's how they freaking fail in life. That's how. So cut to December last year. Me and my boyfriend, now husband, Daniel, are married. Isaac was my best man. My sister and cousin Kai walked me down the aisle. I have a brilliant job in graphic design, have my own house by the sea, and life has never been better. However, I got a call from my sister that my brother was in hospital. I hadn't thought about him that much over the nine year period since I was kicked out, but being reminded of his existence brought up a lot of painful memories for me. I was told by my sister that Sebastian wanted to see me and that it was urgent. So I went to the hospital he was in and met my sister outside the front entrance. I ask her what this is all about, but she doesn't tell me and that I need to ask my twin. So I arrive to where my brother is, who have my parents at his side and my folks actually look happy to see me, as if what they did to me hadn't happened and Sebastian also looked really pleased to see me. It's safe to say something was off. Eventually I ask what's going on and why I was even there, to which my brother tells the family to leave us two alone. He looks so weak as before he used to intimidate me so much. 
He told me that he was dying from kidney failure and has been for the past few years, but now he didn't have long left. I knew immediately where this was going. He then said he always regretted that we never got along, at which point I told him no. He looked confused and asked what I was on about, so I simply told him I wasn't going to donate my kidney to save him. He looked as if I had just pooped in his food. He then went on about how bad the situation was and that he really was sorry for all the things we did to each other growing up. Like, excuse me, we did to each other. I told him that I just wanted a brother growing up that cared and loved me, who wouldn't try to break me every single day for 18 years. He then called in our mum and dad and told them that I wasn't going to give up my kidney. And then they started to spout off that I owed them for my existence and that I have a duty to look after my family. Screw off. Oh my gosh, they're making me so mad. These parents are pathetic. Why don't the parents give their freaking kidney, huh? Like, are they not compatible or what? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know anything about this. But still, these parents are actually pathetic. Only needing someone when they need to use him, you know? Oh my gosh, this makes me so mad. <laughs> Pathetic, pathetic, pathetic. Oh my gosh. Let's say this though. The evil twin totally got his karma. This is what happens when you're freaking mean to people, okay? This is what happens when you freaking try to break someone down every single day. When you're breaking down yourself, no one's going to be there to help you. <laughs> I asked them where that duty was when they kicked me out of the house or where that duty was every time my brother gave me a black eye or their duty was to look after the grandchild when Sebastian decided he didn't want to be a father. I said for all the things he's done from outing me to having an affair with my girlfriend and abandoning his child that this was the universe's way of finally giving back what he dished out to bite him in the ass. Oh <laughs> yo. I then turned around and walked out of the room having that be the last time I ever saw Sebastian again. I walked past my sister who gave me a look. I gave her a look back who then in turn gave me a look that said, I understand. After leaving the hospital, I felt as if a great weight had been taken off my shoulders. I went home and never looked back, pleased with my decision. Now last week, I get a call from my sister calling to inform me that Sebastian had died. She asked if I was okay and I said I was, that I didn't really feel anything in all honesty. She said she understood to a degree as Sebastian hadn't been all that kind to her over the years either. I had my husband and Isaac there to support me. Honestly, at this point, Isaac may as well be our adopted child since he's living with us till this whole situation with the world is over. <laughs> That's so cute. The best friend is their adopted child. The next day, I was getting calls and texts from family members I haven't spoken to in years telling me that I was going to hell for being a bad son, being a bad brother, <sighs> and that me and my husband don't deserve children. Hubby and I have been looking into adoption and surrogacy. This makes me second guess my choice of not giving my brother my kidney. Even in death, he's making things harder for me. I did wonder if I was a bad person and if I made the wrong decision, but I knew that if I was in that position, I would have been left for dead. Screw him. He's right. If he was in that position, Sebastian would not be giving him his kidney. That's for sure. So, yeah. Dude, honestly, none of us will be able to understand this. None of us. Unless we actually stood in his shoes. So I don't think we can be the one to judge and be like, you know, he's a terrible person or blah, blah, blah. That's his brother, blah, blah, blah. Honestly, though, personally, I like what he did. Because for sure, even if he did give Sebastian the kidney, Sebastian isn't going to be grateful. He's just going to act like he did the way before. He's not going to care. You know why? Because the moment Sebastian realized his brother was not giving him his kidney, he changed in that instant. So all the apology stuff was just a lie. He didn't feel sorry. He just wanted the kidney. That's all. Oh, dude. If you ever have a sibling like Sebastian, leave him. I'm pretty sure no one would want to save a sibling that is like Sebastian. That's for sure. The fact that Sebastian made his parents kick him out and then he's going to be like, please give me your kidney. Mm. And then his parents are going to be like, family are there for each other. Well, you guys weren't ever there for him. <sighs> so mad this makes me so mad so i'm glad i'm glad he didn't give sebastian the kidney you know he didn't deserve it might as well give the kidney to someone who deserves it <laughs> do you know what i mean <laughs> instead of giving it to a trashy person i would rather give it to someone else you know even if they're family if they're a bad person if they're just a bad person in society they're gonna make other people's life worse yeah I'm not gonna give it to you I'm gonna give it to someone who's gonna make good use of my kidney 
obviously. <laughs> I'm even surprised that they actually showed up to the hospital because if that was me, if this all happened to me, I wouldn't have shown up, you know. <laughs> I would just be like, what do they want? I'm not going out. I'm lazy. You're in the hospital? Okay, not my problem. <laughs> You never cared about my problems ever. Like when I was sick, no one cared about me. So why do I have to care about you? Oh. Now I feel kind of mean for saying they did a good job and not giving them the kidney. But honestly, bad people don't deserve good things. That's for sure. I've always been the black sheep of the family. Cousins grew up to be doctors, professors, creatives, and whatever else. Meanwhile, I've managed to just make a humble, stable, passive income through some business decisions. Nothing fancy, but I can afford a one bedroom in New York City and live comfortably with that and a part-time job in a cafe. Everyone in the family, including my own parents, judge me harshly for not pushing myself to do what my cousins do, especially my one cousin we will call Randy. Think the stereotypical dude bro who just got rich thanks to working for his dad. Multiply that by 10 and you got Randy. And eventually I just tune them out because I get to enjoy my life with my significant other, work part time and still afford what I want. That's goals in life, honestly. Just being able to live somewhere and not being kicked out and just doing what you want. So to cut this short, Randy has a wife and two kids. He also had a mistress. I found this out because one day when I was walking through the city, when I saw him walking down the street with a woman who clearly wasn't his wife, arms around each other. I checked Facebook and saw he had indeed posted about visiting a bagel shop in the city while on a business trip that morning. So we head indeed in the city. So I decided, let me see how this plays out. I followed them for five hours, snapped several photos, one of them going into a hotel together. I held onto these and waited until Christmas that year, about six months later. I decided to unceremoniously drop printed photos in front of everyone at the table before dinner and made sure to get his wife to see them. Koo screaming and fighting. I actually got a black eye out of it. It was Randy's dad who did it though, not him. Coup police, a lot of questioning. My significant other and I get kicked out. We head back home after talking to the cops one last time. The aftermath. Besides Randy's wife and another cousin who hates Randy, my family cut me off entirely for several years. Whatever. Even my parents had always expressed disappointment in me for not applying myself fully, so no real loss there. Randy got divorced. Lost full custody of the kids after threatening his ex. Family occasionally tries to guilt me into apologizing, but my response is some variation of not gonna apologize for outing a cheating and I'm promptly blocked for another three months. <laughs> Yo, that's the good response, yes. Why would I apologize when I'm not a trashy person? <laughs> As if they want this person to apologize when Randy is the one who cheated. Like what? What do they want him to say? I'm sorry, Randy, for telling everyone that you were cheating on your wife. I really shouldn't have done that. Mm, really? They want him to apologize? That sounds like the stupidest apology ever. No, you don't apologize. <laughs> S.O. and Randy's ex-wife are good friends and the kids call me uncle. Nice having a family who actually loves me unconditionally for once. S.O. and I got married and that's when my family last tried to get into contact with me and were actually nice for once. Seeing me moving on, I guess, eats at them. I don't know. Maybe realizing their punchy bag is gone for good. That's it really. Living my best life now with a good family as opposed to a bad one. Good. Oh my God. I'm so glad they're living their life now, honestly. Screw their freaking family. They don't even sound like family at all. What kind of family treats family like this? They don't. If someone is cheating, you go tell the person who's cheating off. You don't tell the person who exposed the cheater to apologize. Why would you do that? You should thank the person. Honestly, I feel like families just care about pride too much. They're like, no, this can't ever get out. Because if it gets out, then it brings shame to our family. And that's why they hate the person who outed the cheater. Oh, who still thinks like that? It's 2022. Well, that's it for the video. Hope you guys enjoy. Tell me in the comments down below what your thoughts are. And as always, thanks for watching. Hope you guys liked it. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.